Hi everybody, it's Bonnie Jean from BonnieJean.com. Welcome back to today's video. In today's video, we are going to explore the online program called GIMP. Now GIMP is similar to Photoshop. It works in the same manner with a major difference, whereas it's free software that you download and use to manipulate your images. So what I want to show you today was originally to how to create a Kindle book cover. But I realize that you probably aren't familiar with GIMP, so it's probably better if you got some practice using this program first, and then we went into a deeper project later on. So we'll save the Kindle cover for another video. But today I want to show you some of the important tools that are available to you inside of GIMP, and we'll go over how to use each and every one of them. So the tools that we will hopefully cover today will be the rotating, scaling, flipping, cropping, cutting, reducing and saving tools. So let's get started with those right now. So the first tool that I want to go over is the rotating tool, but in order to do that, we need an image. So let's go up to file and say open and open an image that's on your system and pull it into your GIMP. Now this is one of my promotional pieces I used on Facebook. It's not really that important, you know, what file you pull in here, just pull any file in here so that you have something to work with so you can get used to using GIMP. So now let's use our rotating tool, which is shift R on the keyboard or this one here in your toolbox, you click on it. And once you have that, you can click on your image and you'll get this grid. Now you can tell it what angle you want to move by hitting the little arrow keys up here, or you can use the slide bar and turn your image in whatever direction you want and then once you have it rotated in a manner that you know, you're comfortable with, you can hit rotate and it will actually rotate this image. Now control Z on your keyboard, hit those keys at the same time, it'll take your image back to its original position. So the next one that we want to discuss is the scaling tool and that is shift T on your keyboard to pull it up or just choose this one here. So shift T, we'll pull it up. And with this one, we have the ability that we can use the grab handles here, but be careful when you do that, because if you don't do it symmetrically, which means if you don't hold your shift key down at the same time, it's not going to do it symmetrically. So I'm going to undo that and let's go back in here and you could do a 250, you know, change it whatever size you want, and you'll see that it's changing over here as you type your numbers in. If you want to do it symmetrically, you'll have to do the width and height the same. And once you have it in the size that you want, you hit scale and it will automatically take it down to that image size. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is flipping, and that is Shift F on your keyboard or this particular tool here. You can flip vertically or horizontally, and once you choose what you want, you come over here and click on your image, and it'll flip it. Go to horizontal, and it'll flip it horizontally. Pretty easy tool to use. The next tool that we're going to discuss is your cropping tool, which is this tool right here, or Shift-C on your keyboard, and it'll pull up the information that you need down here. So in order to crop, you basically would go around the part of the image that you want, okay? Do your mouse, drag it over the area that you want to crop to, pull in these binding boxes here, and then double click on your keyboard and it will crop the image to the size that you want. Control Z will take us back out of there again. And now we want to cut with a transparency. In order to do that, we're going to use the path tool. That would be this tool right here or B on your keyboard, and you go around the image that you want to cut out, and you keep clicking around the parameter of that image. When you get to the beginning, it will close. Then you can right click, go to select, and select from the path, and that will put marching ants around the path. So if you hit Control I, that will invert the image and then hit delete. It will delete everything except for what you've highlighted here as far as your path is concerned. So we'll hit Control Z, get back out of there. Now it's time to talk about the reducing and the saving commands. Now in order to reduce the file size, you can do this very easily when you export this out onto your computer. So go up to File and say Export As in a box. 
will pop up asking you what you want to name the file and where you want to save it. So I'm going to name this one test2 and I'm going to save it as a JPEG file. So go down here and select this file type by extension and find the JPEG image and then say export. And a box will pop up here and will allow you to click this box so that you can show what your file size is going to be as you're getting ready to export this image. And naturally if you use the slider bar here and you manipulate this image so that it has less color in it, it will also show you over here what that file is going to look like if you save it at this particular quality. And you take notice that the lower in the quality that you go, the lower in file size you get. So this is a very handy feature. And obviously if you get too low, then your file starts to look a little bit of pixelated, but uh, you know, about 45 is good, and then say export, and it will export it out as a JPEG. And then if you want to save this file later on to use as a GIMP file, you click the Save As command and choose. The extension for GIMP is XCF, and you can save that anywhere on your system, and save it and go back and replace that anytime you want. And that's all there is to it. So in our next video, we'll get a little bit more in depth and do a test project.